All right, we are going to be using Blender like it's like an image processor, like uh, Photoshop or After Effects and taking images and uh, displacing them and moving them around based on the geometry that they're on. This video is part of a series that I'm putting here on YouTube where we're looking at Blender like it's After Effects, like it's Photoshop and seeing if we can do some really cool effects on images and logos and text. So depending on when this video is out, uh, there are other ones on YouTube and on Patreon. There are some exclusive videos from this series that you can check out to get even more from. And it's the end of the year. So you can get a annual membership 20% off uh, until January. So if you want to check all that stuff out, that is linked in the description. And let's learn how to make this effect. All right. Uh, I'm in Blender 5.0. I, I, you can do this in earlier versions as long as uh, Geometry Nodes has UVs. So we are going to start out with a plane right here and you are going to need some images and you are going to need an image, uh, preferably two images, roughly the same aspect ratio. So I'm going to be using this image here and it's like, it's a, I believe a two, three aspect ratio. And then later on, I'm going to be combining it with a, I'm sure that was a jump scare uh, with an eyeball and uh, showing you how to do that. So first, again, throw a plane or just any piece of geometry into your scene. I'm gonna open up a new window and I'm gonna head over into the Geometry Nodes Editor. We're gonna click New, we're gonna delete the input and we're gonna get a grid. So because I know that my image is a two, three aspect ratio, maybe if you're uh, using a video, which you can totally use videos on this, uh, it's 16 by nine, so whatever it is. So in this case, it is three tall, two wide, and then I'm just gonna get a transform geometry to scale, uh, scale it up a bit, because it's pretty small. So in terms of your actual geometry, which is completely changeable at any point, um, I'm just going to give it just some geometry, something like that. So the goal is to take an image and um, have these faces move up, down, sideways, whatever, uh, detached from each other, moving around. So we have to be able to do that. So the way that we can get the, that geometry to actually split is to get a split edges node and that is going to you know give that information that we need and then let's get a set position to move those faces around so get a set position get a vector math node set to multiply and that is going to be able to let us control um, the strength and the axis that the uh, displacement is going to happen on and then I'm going to use a noise texture for the displacement I'm going to click on normalize and be very uh, intentional about using color. Color is going to be the thing that uh, allows you to move it rather than uh, in more than one axis. So if I were to go ahead and say I want to displace on the Z, um, they're still connected and we split the edges. So there's one more thing that we need to do in order to get the, the split edges to behave in a way that I want. That is going to be with a capture attribute. So we're going to get a capture attribute. I want an attribute to uh, affect the faces. I'm going to get a random value node, and I want a random value assigned to each face so that I can plug that into the vector, and now it works. And so now we have this. So if we go into Material Preview, um, obviously we don't see an image, but we can move it on the Z like that. Um, we can move it on all axes like this, axes like that. Uh, so let's get a material. So we'll get a set material node. We'll get a new material over here and we'll just grab it. Now, before we put an image on here, we need UVs because if I were to just go ahead, I'm going to go and get a new window, head into the shader editor, and then let's get an image texture. And I'll just plug color straight into surface. We don't need a principal because the, otherwise we'll need to use an emission node. So this kind of bypasses that. And I'm going to open up my image. So let's say I'm going to use the uh, the landscape. Nothing there. And then don't follow along with this. If I just were to hit control T, use an object, it'll work. But then we have to size it around. Um, and then what's going to be annoying, say I just size it up really quick, 
if I move this around, see how the image is not locked in to each one of these faces. That is a problem. We need UVs. Uh, so let's delete th that texture coordinate and let's capture some UVs. So let's get a store named attribute. In order to uh, send UV information from geometry nodes to the shader, you need to go from float to 2D vector, point to face corner, and then literally take this little UV, this little purple guy, and drag him all the way over to value. And then I'm going to organize my notes just a little bit so I can see what's going on. And then last thing, we'll just call it UV. And then once we're in the shading, we'll type in attribute. We named it UV, so we type in UV here, plug it here, and now we have uh, UVs. And so what's really cool is the size of this is going to say, it's going to stretch it out. So that's why the aspect ratio of this grid is important um, to this effect. So now we can do whatever we want. Isn't that awesome? Uh, so I'm going to go here. We are in cycles. I want to go to Eevee. Um, make my world brightness black. I'm going to hit Shift A, get a camera, and then I'm going to hit G and middle click, and we can move around. So this is a really cool, very mo graph, uh, motion graphics looking effect. Super classic, super, super done uh, a lot. But again, you're going to have a client that wants this at some point, or you're gonna have a project where you want to be able to take, uh, and you can use video too, same process. Um, and so say I can move this around like this, you have your noise texture, I'm gonna bring my detail to zero, maybe my scale to three, you switch this over to 4D, and now this portion is animatable. If you bring up that scale, uh, the W is gonna be really sensitive, and then obviously the multiply is going to multiply the effect but it's awesome. Okay, so you can like do things like this. You can do things like this. Obviously you can do stuff like this and like that. There are really cool things you can do. Also check this out. So I'm just gonna move this over like this. We can change the vertices too and it does not throw off um, like the mapping or whatever we did. So say I'm gonna give my, uh, my Y vertices two. So now we have this very classic looking Photoshop effect. Um, everyone's done this. If you have Photoshop, you're like, oh, sick. Look how cool this is. Look what I can do. Look how cool this is. Look what I can do, mom. I can do cool things in Photoshop. Now you can do cool things in Blender with images. Um, and then if you want to go insane, just add more vertices. Your max is a thousand here. Um, and then you can just subdivide mesh. But it's like a data mosh. Is that the right term? But look at that, it's like we're stretching the pixels themselves, but it's just geometry, it's just faces. And it's really cool. Um, and then you can do the exact same thing. We'll do two here and a thousand here and just do it on this one. And now we're stretching the pixels this direction. And again, super awesome. Now, I wanna show you one more trick. I'm just going to do 30 by 30 on the faces. Let's see how that looks. Cool. What if I want to combine two images on this one plane? Right after the set position, you can do that. It's really cool. And it'll keep, make sure you do exactly this way, because if you put anything behind this, you have to redo some stuff. Right after the set position, you can get a separate geometry node. And I specifically want to separate faces. We're gonna get a random value node set to Boolean, and Boolean means we get this slider. So if I hit 0.5, it's gonna separate exactly half of the available faces, plug that into selection, and it's going to separate. So now we are kind of deleting some faces, and this inverted socket is, see where it's black, where there's no image? We have access to that image right there here in the inverted. And so what I'm going to do is I'm just gonna go ahead and duplicate these two here because we're gonna need a new image and we're gonna to need to put the UVs into that image. So plug the inverted into geometry, and then I'm gonna get a join geometry here. Right over here in the materials, I'm gonna get a new material. It'll be just called material two. We'll grab it there, 
and we'll plug it into the join geometry, uh, you're not going to see anything. So first off, we need to go ahead and take the UVs from the grid and plug it into that new store named attribute. And we're going to title this one UV2, or title it anything. It doesn't matter what you title it. And then in my case, again, I'm just going to organize my geometry here so everything looks cool. Nice. UV2, new material. We don't have anything yet. So I'm going to go ahead and bring up a new window again. Go to the shader editor and make sure that you are in material 002. So I'm going to delete the principled another image texture. So we're going to do the same thing that we did a minute ago. We're going to get a attribute. We're going to type in UV2 and plug color right here. And then we're going to open up uh, another image, hopefully in the same aspect ratio. And then we can double check, it, are the UVs working? Looks like it. If I play with my, yep, looks like the images are staying in place. There we go. We now have two images and then you can play with the um, distribution with the random value. You can play with how many faces are in this scene um, with the grid information, just like that. So say we do, we're done by the way, guys, you can, you can click away now. Uh, we now have this. So now we have really cool, really freaky effects. Now this is geometry nodes. So this is one of those benefits of we're building a 2D effect in a 3D software. Uh, you can randomly assign a wireframe to these individual faces. Um, maybe we're doing an effect where it's a lot of faces. The client wanted a lot of faces. Maybe I'll, I'll, sever, I'll sever this connection and we'll just delete a few. Maybe the client wants a fly through animation. Well, instead of just having par uh, images that we're flying through, we can have some random particles to give it this really cool spatial effect. So because we're using Blender, you can do more things. Not saying that you can do like more or better things with After Effects. In, in fact, that scenario I just said you can do with After Effects. So I'm, correct me. Um, but it's free. <laughs> but regardless, you could do it in, in Blender and it's real time and it's really cool and you can do a lot of interesting things. So that's kind of the point of this. It's just like a fun idea. But anyway, that's the tutorial. That is the idea. And I hope you guys think it's cool. I hope you learned something from it. Using images in Blender is a really fun trick. Anyway, thank you guys for watching. Again, check out the bonus stuff on Patreon. Check out the rest of the videos from the series here on YouTube. And I'll see you guys in the next one.